this is not the first time that what we're going to do is take a new idea, right, which is actually an old idea you've met before that's dressed up in new language, but once you dress up in new language, you can take it further, okay? You've been working with polynomials for a very long time. You just maybe have never called them that, okay? So just underneath your heading as an example, okay? Polynomials that you've met before are things like, say, oh, 2x plus 5. That's a polynomial. Whoa, groundbreaking, right? Uh, we spend a lot of time looking at quadratics, quadratic expressions, quadratic equations, factorizing them and so on. You guys know what my favorite uh, quadratic is. That's it right there. That's also a polynomial, okay? Um, you could push on this a little bit more. You can see I've got <coughs> something to the power of one. I've got something to the power of two. What's it called when you've got something with the power of three? It's called a, a cubic, right? So just as another example, I could have something like, oh, I don't know, uh, 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus x, I don't know, whatever you like, okay? All of these things, this is a whole family of functions. Remember what functions are? You can put a value in and you'll get a value out. This is a whole family of functions and they're all called polynomials. Um, you guys know my obsession with names. Polynomials, very, very simple phrase. What does poly mean? That's um, multiple. Yeah, multiple, many, right? So for example, um, uh, many. many. Um, we talk about polygons, which are shapes which have, which have many angles, right? We talk about polyester, which is a material made of a whole bunch of other materials, okay? And we talk about polymers, which are like plastics that are made up of, anyway, you get the idea, okay? So it means many. Nomials, ugh, that's a weird phrase. Uh, in our context, what it means is terms. It's something which has many terms. You can see I've got a whole bunch of terms. I can have as many terms as I like. I don't have to stop at um, you know, excuse, I can make them bigger or smaller or whatever I like. Okay. Um, there's a very specific example of polynomials, which um, is this guy over here. This here is called a binomial because it has two terms in it, right? This is a binomial. By extension, you'd call this a trinomial, and so on. Okay? So all it means is, I've just got a whole bunch of terms. But the terms are very specific. Can you see you've always got something, and they're raised to powers, and then you've got numbers out the front. Okay? So let's introduce some language, and we'll use, um, we'll use this guy here. Uh, no, actually, I'll do, I'll do one more example. Example four. Let's make it, let's make it 2x. For bless you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to use this as my example, and we're going to attach some language to this. Okay. Um, firstly, these are all polynomials. These are all polynomials. But the reason why I've given you these four as my first examples is because they come up so frequently, they all have special names. When you have things that come up again and again and again, people are like, ooh, that's kind of cool, let's talk about that one. So the first one that we've got, because if you draw this thing, you'll get a straight line. Okay? This is called a linear polynomial. Okay? If you draw y equals 2x plus 5, you just get a straight line. Okay? Uh, we already know what these guys are called when this power up here is a 2. We call these quadratics, right? So this is a quadratic polynomial. A couple of minutes ago, you told me this is a cubic polynomial. And this last one here, like you can see these have to do with the number. There's a, there's a 2 here and a 3 here and a 4 here, okay? So these guys here are called quartics, okay? Uh, if it's a power 5, you get a quintic, and after that, you kind of, they stop talk, calling them special names because they don't come up very often. Okay? At least in the mathematics that we're doing. So, one, two, three, four. These are particular kinds of polynomials. Now, to talk a little more specifically, there's all these different pieces in the polynomial that we need to know about. Okay? One number is more important than all the rest. Okay? One number is more important than all the rest. What if you noticed? See this quartic that I um, wrote down? Right? Do you see it's got a term here, x to the 4. There's an x cubed. There's an x squared. I don't have any x terms in there, not like here and here and here, okay? But it doesn't matter, right? In fact, you don't have to write this one down. If all I had was that x to the 4, it's already a quartic because it's got that number out the front there, right? And you can add anything else to that that you like. These other things are much less important 
than that biggest number up there, whichever the biggest number is. It's kind of the one that takes the driver's seat and takes over and defines what's going on. So therefore, it's super important. We call that number there, uh, it'll be one or two or three or four. We call that highest power, we call it the degree. Okay, the degree is whatever is the highest power in your polynomial. So I'll just write that. That's the highest power you can find. It doesn't have to be out the front. You know, I could write, see this guy here, I could write 5 take away x to the 4. But the x to the 4 is the most important term, right? You can think about this in terms of um, functions, right? Remember we said these are all functions, you can put a number in, you'll get a number out, okay? If I put in numbers like, say, 0 or 1 or 2, really little numbers, okay? All of these numbers on the end, they really matter, right? Like 5 is a lot bigger than 0, 1 or 2. And 8 is a lot bigger than 0, 1 or 2, okay? But if the numbers you're putting into your function are huge, if they're enormous, like a million or a billion or a trillion, what difference is 5 or 6 or negative 1 or 8? What difference does that make when you raise it you know, to the full power? And the answer is hardly any difference at all. Okay? Like if I'm looking at this guy, a million to the power of 4, that's 1 with uh, 24 zeros after it. And then there's an 8. We don't really care about the 8. He's so small, he's inconsequential. Okay? Now that's obvious just with <laughs> these numbers on the end. But in fact, it's all of those terms. Only that guy is the one which really drives things, okay? So since he's so important, uh, we attach a few other things to this, right? So this whole term here, right? Um, the one which has the degree on it. You remember I said a polynomial just means many terms? This whole term we call the leading term. It's the term that is the most important out of all the terms, right? They're, I mean, they all matter, kind of, okay? But this is the one which really makes a difference, okay? Because it's the leading term, the number out the front of the leading term is kind of important to me as well. For instance, see, see these two here, right? The leading term here is x to the 4. The leading term here is minus x to the 4, okay? That number at the front, which in this case is minus 1, or in this case 1, makes a big difference. In fact, in, in this case, it, it turns the whole thing upside down. Okay? So because that number is so important, I'm running out of space here, but I'm going to do it anyway. In this case, it's a 2. Okay? I'm going to put it, I'm going to rub it out over here. The number in front of a pronumeral, like x or y or theta or something like that, is generally called r. Does anyone know? It starts with a c. Uh, coefficient, very good. We'll get to the constant in a second. Okay. So this here, this arrow is going to the whole, the whole bubble. Right? But just the two, that coefficient, because it's on the leading term, we call it the leading coefficient. It's the coefficient on the leading term. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. You've got all these other terms, they have their own other coefficients. There's one more term that matters to me, which is matters significantly enough that it gets its own name. And uh, it's the one Eric mentioned, actually. This one on the end. Okay, this one on the end. Remember, a function changes its value depending on what inputs you lay into it, right? If it's 0, or 1, or 2, or 100. All of these bits with x's, they'll all change, and they'll all vary. But this 8, and this negative 1, and this 6, and this 5, they don't care what x is, right? They don't get bigger. They don't get smaller. They're always the same size no matter what x is. That means they're constant. They don't change. So in fact, we call it the constant term. The constant, constant term is really handy, right? Remember, in um, y equals mx plus b form, like a straight line, the constant is just your y-intercept. Y exactly right. In fact, the constant is always the y-intercept. The y-intercept of this quadratic will be 6. And the y-intercept of this cubic will be negative 1. And I have no idea what this quadrant look like, looks like, but I know its y-intercept will be 8. Okay? So here are our important pieces. These are like language that we're going to use and refer to over and over again as we do some actual operations on polynomials.